what is godly relationships? You guys have anything you want to say on that? It's a little question. You just have to give me like one answer. You just have to give me like one answer. All right. I believe a godly relationship is two people surrendering to the will of God. Okay. And so it's not about each other. Marriage is not about each other, but it's about glorifying God because everything is about Jesus. So, yeah. Amen. Is it only with a significant other or is it with friends as well? Can a godly relationship encompass all those areas? Yeah, it definitely can. Um, everybody's relationship with each other is different. Um, but like even right now, we just came and we just had like a our Bible study and like we awesome. kind of like grew in like our own way. That makes sense. So it doesn't have to be necessarily intimacy with like a spouse. Right. Yeah, and and are you guys first year, second year? What are you guys freshman, sophomore? Transfer. Transfer bro, sophomore. Okay, gotcha. Have you guys been new friends here? Yeah. With your friends? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Well, I just want to say like the, the Bible. You're exactly right. Actually, the Bible kind of speaks on more on godly friendships than about the intimate relationships. It says that in uh, Paul speaks about in Romans that they devoted each other to the Word of God, breaking bread, just eating, gathering together, do Bible studies, and that's what's important. Later on, with the intimacy that comes up to later when you then two become one in flesh, right? All right. Well, thank you guys. Uh, what's your name? Uh, Rosalind. Rosalind. Eva. Eva. Valentina. Valentina. All right, thank you guys. You guys have a good one. Christian, sorry. What do you think a godly relationship is? No idea. I don't even know what a godly relationship is. No? no? Okay. Well, I'll tell you this real quick. So a godly relationship could be of two things. Of course, it's like having a significant other is an important aspect, right? right. But a godly relationship is building friendships within the community. Especially like here at PBA, you're surrounded by a Christian community. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us that it's not good for men to be alone. And what's saying is that it's not good for us to not have community with others. And, and you want to do that so it can help you out and devote you in all your life, right? And you're focusing and struggles with classes or just an area of others in your life to help build you up. Okay. Right. And what's your name? I'm Jack. Okay, nice to meet you, Jack. I'm Christian. Nice to meet Sorry you. Sorry about that. No, right. Thank you, man. Have a good one. What do you think a godly relationship is? Oh, that's a good question. You got that. Um, <laughs> I think that it's just being centered around the Lord, obviously, but okay. like praying together and obviously worshiping the Lord together and just loving Jesus together. Right. Growing in your relationship with God and making sure that God's the priority, like always in your relationship. And then just that you're always like implementing those Christian values into your relationship. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and I have another question to follow up with that. Is a godly relationship only about finding a significant other or is it also building up other relationships? Building up other relationships, 100%. 100%. Right. Going on with that, do you think before you can find your significant other, you need to first have good godly relationship with friends? Absolutely. I think that you need a good community around you all the, always, but especially before you can do a relationship. All right. And then the next, this is a question. Last question. Right, either one of you can answer this one. Is a PBA a good place to find that? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> for her it is. For her it is? Why, why for her? Yes. <laughs> she found one. Oh, you found one. That's yes. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. That's I awesome. did. Yeah. Well, what about friendships in general? Oh, well, friendships absolutely. definitely. It's a really good community and a really good place to make lifelong friends. Yeah. Have I, you guys known each other for a long time? No, but we're um, we, we're tight. We met <laughs> like at the end of July, and yeah. we've been close ever since. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Ari <laughs> and Kira. Kira. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you. Have a good you guys one. have a good one. Thank you guys. It's on TikTok. Uh, it's on, on it's on YouTube. Oh, so okay. So the question is, what are what is a godly relationship to you? Um, it's being with somebody special and staying with them for a while. I don't know. Okay. I'm literally I'm not great at. For me, a godly relationship is one that's you have you, both of you have a relationship with God before you have a relationship with each other. That's good. That's um what I actually learned um from my church. We had a little bit of a series where we talked about it. Um, like the section from First Corinthians thirteen. Love comes in all different kinds of ways. Like there's agape, there's the platonic love, and there's also the romantic love. And um, the lo kind of love that's described even in First Corinthians 13, that doesn't just apply for like brotherly love, but it's also like romantic love. And that's that's what I've been oh, That's awesome. I, I wanna to touch on what you just said. Yeah, because in the Greek, there's five different forms of love. You have agape, which is the unconditional love. The philos, which is the brotherly love that actually most of us Christians be walking is the philos love. Um, Ergos is the love of like romance and it's more of that pleasure and then storge is the love of family. All those are important in their regard but of course the one that we have with Christ is the unconditional love. So my follow-up question with you is then are godly relationships only about finding the significant other or having good friendship? Like I think, you want to answer yeah this. you can have a godly relationship with anybody you know it doesn't relationships doesn't always like mean like 
romance, yeah. you know? So I'm going to go with her answer. Okay. And then... I'm not really, like, Christian or Catholic. Like, coming here was, okay. like, my first time seeing everything. And so far, I'm really liking it. But, um, yeah, I'm, like, planning to go to church and awesome. know more about it. So what's your background? Um, So I did grow up Catholic. Like, I went to okay. Catholic church, but I grew up in public schools. Okay. So I wasn't really, like, in private schools like all my other friends. So they kind of have a background, and I... Do not. It's like new to you. Yeah, it's new to me. Yeah. I like uh, a little bit myself is that I did a little bit of public uh, private school and then in high school I went to public school and that was oh, like yeah. a difference. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. It's, it's a difference. Culture shock for sure. But I actually appreciated it because it kind of like I had that good strong Christian background and I was able to face the world and yeah. you know like watch out for myself. But it's awesome to be here. And are you going to which are you going to a family church here? Um, I have not gone anywhere yet. Like I, I, I need. I need... Oh wait, no, I am going somewhere tonight. The seven p.m. It's like a Oh, it's an anchor. Oh, yeah, worship. anchor. Yeah. Anchor? Yes. Oh um, one of my friends in Ocean View told me that I should go. Yes, so should go to anchor. Yeah, yes, definitely. It's my first time. And and just to like help you on the idea of like why God relationships are so important in Roman and in Corinthians. And throughout, even in Proverbs, it talks about how building godly relationship with people helps build up that community and helps build up your strength in God. Especially when you're trying to get help or you get called out. Yeah. Like the Bible tells us that iron sharpens iron. So it's like you're you're literally getting yourself in a better position than what you are originally. And then in Romans, it talks about that you devote they devoted each other to the word of God and eating together. So a lot of times people just think that, oh, I can only have godly relationships in church. But you can have godly relationships wherever you go, regardless of you're supposed to go. And that's a form of ministry. That's a form of, of evangelizing, as Matthew 28 tells us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, what's your name? Isabel. Isabel. Isabel? Yep. Nice to meet you, nice Isabel. Nice to meet you. Jasmine. Nice, nice to, to meet you, Jasmine. Oh, sorry about that. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys you. have a good one. What is a godly relationship? Do I hold it? Yeah. Hey, if you want to hold it, go for it. Just put it, like, right up to your chin. Um, I would say a godly relationship is, like, a lot of trust. And, I mean, you, you know your faith. And you kind of had a calling. And you know that you want to be close with God. And, like, you live by it daily. And, you treat others like you're in a relationship with God. I would say that's the main part. Uh, a godly relationship is probably keeping your faith in Him and keeping trust in Him and just building that relationship. So we know what a godly relationship is for ourselves. What's a godly relationship in terms of having someone else? A friend or a significant other? What do you think the importance of that is? Of how you like respect others and like treat others and like you would treat someone the same way you treat like you treat God like you love him and you pray for him and you ask him questions and, like you learn from him like the same way you would want your friends to and like ask your friends like if they need help or like if they need to be close to God. In the Bible it also tells us that they devoted each other to the word of God. Later on in Corinthians what you were saying that they hold each other accountable that Paul says that we're supposed to hold each other accountable right so that we don't fall into sin that we hold ourselves it's like think about a boat that's in a wave right being tossed in the sea right that you have like that person helping Helps keep you afloat. He helps keep you centered on Christ. He keeps you moving so that you don't sink into the ocean. All right. What's your guys' names? I'm Will. Will? Uh, Eli. Eli. All right. Thank you guys. Thank I appreciate you. it. My name's. What's your name? Santi. Santi. All right. Santi. I have a question to ask you. Okay. What is worship? I think worship is anything done in glory to God. Yeah. Yeah. Is that it? That's all I've got. That's all you got. Yeah. All right. Marissa. Worship to me is giving back to God what is rightfully His. Um, no way. We take the gifts and talents that God has given us, whether that be art forms, whether like music, um, dance, or even just like anything that we do, even work is giving it back to God as an expression of praise and adoration. We were worshiping on the, on the piano and you on the guitar and then you with the piano and singing. Um, worship is the way the Bible describes it in, first, in Genesis, in the book of Genesis, when God directs Adam into what he's supposed to do with the domain of earth. He gives him dominion over the earth. He tells him when he works in the soil, he tells him to toil it. But where there's, in the Hebrew is avoda, which is the same word that's used in King David when he uh, is worshiping God with the Psalms. Same word is used in Solomon and Kings when he builds the temple of mm -hmm. God is that he uses the word avoda. So the word there avoda is the same word that you would use for work. So in Hebrew, mm -hmm. worship and work is the same thing. It's interchangeable. So the idea, like what you were saying, is that in everything we do in work, we're supposed to do it in worship unto God. Mm -hmm. Whenever we have like an attitude of we're frustrated or I hate my job or I hate this. And sometimes we were kind of like justified for that because sometimes I hate my job. But I have to remember, <laughs> but I have to remember that when I'm working on is that I have to give honor and glory to God. Mm -hmm. And in those aspects of worship, I'm not working in spirit and in truth of God. And the thing that could happen then when I'm not honoring God in that worship is that I'm not acting in, let's say, um, proper union with God. So then I'm not working in the spirit that leads me to peace and understanding mm -hmm. and comfort mm -hmm. and strength around those around me. 
And in like in the, there's other scriptures that talks about when people see us and worship, they see the glory of God manifest through us. Mm-hmm. So then in everything that we do in work is in worship and the talents and the passions we have, whether it's us and musicians, like which is a part of worship, it is, don't get me wrong, it's not that it's not, but in everything we do, whether we're, uh, we work at you know commercial real estate or we work in farming and all that, and the way we worship God in a good sports, which is like, I see the way his work ethic is. His work ethic shows something that's unique about him and it brings people to Christ. But yeah. Thanks yeah. for answering your question. Any final remark? <laughs> <laughs> so if I'm a janitor, that's worship? Yeah, you are, if, you, if you're happy and you have a good attitude and you give God doing it and you do your best, like you have to be faithful over little, you be made faithful over much. So it's not just like I showed up to work and I'm worshiping God. It's like, no, I'm going to do my best in this for what God has given to me. And that it's, it's a form of evangelization too. Because other people are like, why is he such a good janitor? Why is she such a good janitor? Like everything is spotless. And they come and talk to you and they're like, why are you so? Because I just filled with the glory of God. And that's a good way to evangelize. All that's worse. Are you guys inter- interested in an interview? A quick one? Um, I just sound really sick right now, and I'm really sick. Too, okay. Literally. No, you're fine. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Same here.